uh, preempt uh, what uh, the inaugural lecture will tell us. And so I will ask all of you to, to sit down with ears open and uh, rapt attention as we listen to Professor Ezema Nadife. I call her Omi Homa. Okay, when I mean Homa, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't think there's any other fortuitous type of serendipity than the one we are enjoying now. In this law, in our tradition, walking into our presence is not a person than Her Excellency Dame A.G. Etiaba, former governor of Africa. Please, a round of applause for Mommy Annie. You know, I would have been very uncomfortable if the citation reading had started and she walked in and I continued waiting on the way to announce her presence. Thank you very much, Mommy, for gracing this occasion. I also have, we also have in our midst, and I have the privilege to announce the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics of Chukwemeka Odumebu Chuku University in Nigeria, Professor Elis Idemobi. No, in the please round of applause for him. Thank you, thank you. And right away, we'll be plunged headlong into our most hallowed of traditions, apart from convocations, and that is the inaugural lecture. Professor Frank Collins, I don't know I'm not going to have to go to the house. I'm not going to have to go to the house. Please round of applause for Professor Frank Collins of Dafo as he comes up to read the citation on the 52nd inaugural lecture, Professor. But before that, I have only um, got a much When the grey hair looks for the agent and it doesn't see, it lands on the young one. Because let us put a round of applause for Chukunon So in the future. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. MC. Our own dear Vice Chancellor, may I stand on the already established protocol? And on this note, may I respectfully invite the guest inaugural lecturer to keep standing. Mr. Chairman, so distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am particularly happy to be chosen to present this citation. In fact, Nobody else will have been more appropriate, bearing in mind the intermingling in interesting realities that gave birth to this very choice. First, Professor Ezimman Nabife was a teacher at Igwebike Grammar School, okay. Second, I say that she was a teacher at Igwebike Grammar School, Oka. Second, she was also our boss 101 lecturer here in Namdazikwe University, Oka, when I was a student of the Department of Political Science. In fact, during those years and as young adults, we were wondering in our wildest imaginations and unconscious debates whether Professor Ezeman Nabife was indeed born of a woman. <laughs> she was so angelic, 
like a shining star, quintessential Colossians and Amazon. She walked the lawns of our great college compound in an unblemished long shorts with the then trading and trending elitist American jerry coils. In a manner that attracted even the admirations of the innocent. In our childish innocence too, we used to line up the corridors of our classroom just to watch and listen to that young lady with not only the charms of a gorgeous damsel and the elegance of a conquering Cinderella. But her American accent and smiles that magically glued the Juan diced and even the habitual class dodgers back into their seats. While a number of bright students then even volunteered to repeat her class, just to be, just to be in the care of that beautiful soul who saw teaching as a vocation. That was decades ago. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today I stand here to present to you the 52nd inaugural lecturer, a great woman with astonishing credentials, a lady of many triumphant characters, a unique personality, a strong character that evokes strong passion, and a sexually courageous lady, seasoned administrator with the best moral fiber. A great scholar and, and a great large heart, sealed with irresistible measure of elegance and magnificence. Her smiles are consuming, and her voice penetratingly irresistible, as she touches every show, every soul she encounters with unquantifiable doses of incurable charm and attraction. A professor of business administration. Professor Ezima Kate Madioba Nabife Ne Akuche. Throughout human history, the children of destiny come with some uncommon paraphernalia. Thus, the suiting peculiarity of the rains, the cooling sensations of the breeze, the cheering melodies and the jubilant innuendos of the moments became a confirmation of the greatness of the new child delivered to the revived family of Chief Philip Onye Boazo and the former Aguche of Eziowele in the Demili local government area of Anambra State. Ezima, as she is fondly called, and the name she loved so much, obtained the Bachelor of Arts degree from Washington State University, Palma, United States of America, 1979 to 1982. MBA from Anambra State University of Science and Technology, Enugu, 1988 to 1990. And Doctor of Philosophy, PhD from the University of Port Harcourt, 2000 to 2004. As a focused young lady, Esimma wanted to be renowned to be a renowned scholar and administrator in line with her early motivation in life. Thus, she started her young academic career as graduate teacher with State Education Commission in Enugu, Institute of Management and Technology, IMT, Enugu, 1987 to 1992. She later moved to Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, in 1992, where, through diligence and lift of hard work, she rose to the enviable status of a professor in 2009. With such a total punctuality, Ezekma has served and still serving in various academic positions, among which are subbing Faculty of Management Sciences, Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, 2004 to 2006, Faculty Representative to Senate, 1994 to 1997, 2004 to 2006, and 2008 to 2010. The head of department, 
Business Administration 2010 to 2012, Director Unisic Business School 2011 to 2012, Sub-Dean Faculty of Management Sciences, Namda Azikiwe University, Oka 2004 to 2006, Dean Faculty of Management Sciences, Namda Azikiwe University, Oka 2002 to 2014, Associate Director Accreditation, Unisic Business School, 2017 to date. Director Center for Community and Rural Development of Namda Azikiwe University, Oka, 2015 to date. Her expo exploits and constancy to purpose as an academic staff could not escape the recognition of the then Vice Chancellor, who rewarded her with the Vice Chancellor's Prize for Best Academic Staff. Faculty of Management Sciences, Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, in 1996. And in 2006, the Dean's Prize as something extraordinary for hard work, diligence, and integrity in the Faculty of Management Sciences, Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, in 2006. Today, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, she is the first female inaugural lecturer in the Faculty of Management Sciences and the Department and the Department of Business Administration, Namda Azikiwe University, Oka. In all, she is simply gifted in administration. And one thing about her is that though gifted with soft, sweet voice, but whenever it is time to take critical stance on issues, Ezima looks straight into one's eyes and say it all in total exhibition of powerful example of courage combined with courtesy. An academic of great reports, Professor Eziman Nabife has contributed immensely to the development of other universities in Nigeria. Since 2015, she has been serving as member governing council of Chukwe Meka Odumegu Chukwu University. Uli, and was a member of the National Universities Commission accreditation teams to various universities in Nigeria, including, of course, Lagos, University of Lagos. She has served as external examiner to several universities in Nigeria, but not limited to University of Nigeria, Nsuka, Benue State University, Paul University, Ebony State University, Abia State University, etc. She has to her credit intimidating number of articles and book chapters in reputable international and journal and local journals, who authored three books with litany of conference papers delivered at home and abroad. As an academic mentor, she has produced no less than five PhDs and successfully supervised over 30 MBA, MSc, and PGD theses, and still counting. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, distinguished academics, ladies and gentlemen, there is still another area in which these quintessence of a woman has exhibited unique character rooted in grand humility. It might interest you to know that Professor Ezeman Nabife is a former Vice Chancellor. She served as a Vice Chancellor and a visiting professor during the establishment of the new University of Arpajo. East West Road, Apajo, LMA local government area of River State, Nigeria, between 2014 and 2015. Little wonder why she carries herself with the courage and dignity of that office wherever she is. Believing with Mahabia that there is no magic to success, but with endurance and perseverance, success is magical. She is a fellow, Nigerian Institute of Management Sciences, fellow Institute of Strategic Management, and member 
Nigerian Academy of Management, etc., etc., etc. And the spiritual ring, Ezima is sternly guided by her sacerdotal obligations and commitment to her ecclesiastical calling. She is a devout Catholic and president, Catholic women organization, then Joseph the Walker Chaplaincy, Lady Knight of the Ancient and Noble Order of Knights of St. Mulumba, and love singing praises to God at all times. Professor Zimman Nabife is also an outstanding character in selfless generosity and has given great assistance and hope to her people and those around her. Her peculiar love for philanthropy is legendary. She believes in serving God through service to humanity. She is currently the national treasurer, national governing body of inner wealth clubs in Nigeria, having served as national editor, national governing body of Inner West Clubs in Nigeria 2017 and 2018, national secretary, national governing body of Inner West Clubs in Nigeria 2015 and to 2016, the district chairman, district 914, international Inner West Nigeria 2003 to 2004, and chairman. Education Committee, Lady Knights of St. Mulum, Orchard Sub Council, 2010 to 2014, and Vice President, Nigerian Institute of Management, NIM, Nandazikiwe University Orca, since 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, at the home front, Professor Ezima is not only exemplary but a mother magnificus. She got married to late Professor Nanso Nabife, a jolly good fellow, and a husband extraordinary at Abakliki, and wedded in the United States of America. They have four beautiful adults, and I'm sure they are here. Because of her unique approach to family conviviality, her mother-in-law called her Madia and Madioba. Which is a real fit, ladies and gentlemen, bearing in mind the unending war or wars between Nedi and Munyenwa in Igbo land. Ask why that real relationship exists, Ezima simply said, and I quote, my life is a demonstration of God's grace and mercy, unquote. To me, and those of us who love her, Ezima will never grow old because, because, and because her heart is too beautiful. Oh, yeah. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, sir, on the pedestal of being her former student, I stand here to present to you an academic juggernaut, a multi-generational mother, seasoned administrator, courageous, beautiful, and elegant, an academic Ijelemwan and the great inspiration to the young generation of scholars, Professor Ezima Kate Mandiogo Nabife. <laughs>
Before taking on the lecture, I want to thank Professor Collins. My students, as he rightly said, at the beginning of my school. Thank you for accepting because um, I think I'm the smallest of those who has agreed to write their citations. So it's really a privilege that he accepted to do that. And I want to say thank you very much for accepting. Before we go on to, I want to thank the only ever female governor in any state in Nigeria. Because I knew I was going to see a big person and they said no. She said no to any such gifts. So I want to thank you, Ma, for coming. My own husband. Even though he's, she's a husband without. <laughs> okay. Abogidi. 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 I want to thank him too because ordinarily he would not have been here today. I wouldn't know why and what happened and um, he is here, but I'm happy you came. Thank you very much. He is my friend. He is my friend. Then I want to thank the Vice Chancellor. Um, I know this is not time for acknowledgement, but it's, it's a rare feat. I, I wouldn't know how big. I didn't know I was this big. And I thank my uh, Vice Chancellor, the Chairman of Council first, Akite Chendo. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Greg Mwakubi. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Ellis Ndemobi. And the Registrar for being here. I, I thank you, ma. That's my in law. That's my in, my in law going out. I'm sure they are giving her a good seat. So we want to go on. Ah, Ezozo. Ezozo. No. No. I, I gave out the invitation which was not, was not delivered. And it was only on Tuesday that I discovered and I took it to his palace. And I said, please. And he said, were you the one that gave me a letter? I said, no, it's Obio Konko. <laughs> Professor Obio Konko. Whose inaugural lecture will come up next month? 12 12. 12 12. A, a, a big rascal. So, a, a big rascal. So, and he accepted to come, and here he is. As also, he got none. And I want to go on immediately without. Um, wasting much of your time. The topic on paper is unsustainability of family firm. The search for answers. You may have seen searching for answers on the banners, but this is a record that will stand the test of time and it bears the search for answers, because I believe it will go on. Um, I want to officially take the protocol, the Vice Chancellor, in the person of the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Omi Homa. That is what we used to call ourselves then. The past Deputy Vice Chancellors, members of the University Governing Council, who are not here because a validatory council is being held in honor of the Pro Chancellor, Al Haji Aziz Bello, who has left this world to the great beyond, according to their faith. Principal officers of the university, 
provosts, College of Health Sciences, deans of faculties, directors and heads of department, distinguished professors here present, visiting academics and colleagues, non-teaching staff of the university, my lord spiritual, temporal, traditional rulers who are here present, Abogide, and there's also, and I notice there's another one. I'm sorry, I will recognize him at the appropriate time by his main domain. You're welcome. Captains of industry, family members and friends, gentlemen of the press and electronic media, great music students, scantily represented by mostly uh, students from the Department of Music. Thank you for coming. They are on holidays now, very short holidays. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with a heart full of praise to God and a great sense of humility that I stand before you, most distinguished and respected audience, to deliver my inaugural lecture, which is coming 10 years after my professorship was announced. I thank God for the privilege which can partly be attributed to the new structure set by the immediate past Vice Chancellor, Professor Joseph Ahaneko, and has been sustained and improved on by the current Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Ukechiko Isimone. As a result of these steps, inaugural lectures have become more attractive and therefore currently very much sought after. Venturing into my academic life is something I plead with the Vice Chancellor a little time to delve into. Having lost my father in the program, my mother was left with the daunting task of raising nine children. She once called us to a meeting and said she will kill anyone that will bring shame to her. That I swallowed with much respect. In order not to bring shame to my mother, I joined the Scripture in Non Fellowship because I see them meet every Sunday, pray, and do the evangelism, having been born an Anglican before becoming a faithful Catholic. I joined them and I stayed with them. And I dare say that I drew a lot of spiritual strength to guide me in the following years. The next call by my mother was me alone, and the passionate appeal was to get married after my first school living certificate. So she, co she could cope with raising the other nine, eight, because we were nine. This I vehemently said no to. I said no, I will not marry because if my father were to be alive, I wouldn't have gotten married by, by then. She wept bitterly, of course, asking me, do you want me to go and steal? What will I do? I simply said, I will help you pay my school fees. And that was when I resorted to hawking. I hawked on every way except human feces and urine, including water, selling water. Not uh, pure water, because there was no pure water then. But having lived, grew, uh, having lived in our Bakeleke, that is known for their rice, we would wake up very early in the morning and uh, rush to, you know, colonize big drums. I will feel this, I will feel this. And then you will start carrying very big basins to make sure you get some four or five shillings by the end of the day. So I continued and always reminded my mother to save some money for my school fields. And that continued. I finally successfully completed my secondary education, which was the bone of contention. And of course, got married thereafter immediately. I got married because she said, 
you have finished. So now I said, I will get married. Don't worry. So I got married. And uh, I thank God for my husband, Nansun Nabife, who gave me the opportunity of traveling abroad and obtaining my first degree there. The story then continued, and today, through the enabling grace of God, I am standing before you to bring the gown to town. The introduction. The choice of this topic. You know, sometimes, for those who have not, uh, you know, taking topics for your inaugural lecture, of course, is not a must that you will end up with the same topic. But sometimes it becomes a daunting task to find out exactly where you are going to, you know, via your research. Of all the papers you have written, of all the researches, you begin to look of where you have a comparative advantage. And I believed that I had it in this area. On sustainability of family friends, the search for answers. The first reason for choosing that area and you know, getting strengthened through research is because my parents were co-preneurs. Co-preneurship is a business owned by a husband and a wife or wives. I grew up and saw my father and mother as um, business people who processed raw uh, tobacco into snuff. And then as we were little, a lot of vehicles would line up what we call gonguru. They would line up to take their turns and a lot of containers would be filled. And we, I grew up seeing them like that. But today, of course, the business is no more because none of us thought it while to go take our career path in that area. Of course, you can think of the reason. The second reason for my choice in this area is because I am married to Newi people, born entrepreneurs, people who will see tomorrow, even today, and who will start to do a lot of research on areas unimagined. And I felt that because these people are so ingenious. If we take an example, we will see, we well, think of Indose, who has flooded Nigeria with his very many brands of innocent vehicles. That is the ingenuity of one man. And then we can think a lot of other businesses, like uh, an example is Jimmy's, who um, immediately after the war, he was processing spoons from metals picked directly from the garbage. And when people saw that it was a source of money, of course, everybody started picking and selling to him. The third reason is because with a lot of worry, like the Deputy Vice Chancellor said, a lot of would have been blue chip firms and businesses are dead today. And we can think of a Kennedy Lichuku Izuchuku Motors, Umano Motors, Gina Drinks, a lot of them, if you begin to count what went wrong, what happened. So, these three reasons informed my choice and solidified my research in that very area. What are family firms? Family firms are a branch in the field of entrepreneurship. It's a branch. An entrepreneur or an entrepreneur is a heroic, a heroic individual who possesses specific traits and abilities. He destroys market equilibrium and economic order. That is, he scatters everything in order to foster economic uh, development. Of course, there are so many definitions which can take any of these uh, combinations. A husband and a wife business, like a co 
a husband with children, or children and parents, extended family members, two or more generations in their employment, stockholders, advisors, partners, board members. These are various combinations. <laughs> family owned businesses and family managed are also FOBs, that is family owned businesses. Family owned but not family managed. Nations. Family managed but not family owned. These are all definitions we can accept as a, a family firm. But operationally, they can be defined by the components of a family's involvement in the business in terms of ownership, management, or business succession. One thing that we have seen over the years is that there is no consensus in the definition of family firms. And as a result of that, the European Expert Group in 2012 developed a definition parameter by saying that a firm of any size is a family business if majority of decision-making rights are in the position of the natural persons who established the firm or who acquired or in their spouses or parents or children or children's direct heirs. When a firm of any size, the majority decision-making rights are in the direct or indirect ownership of the family. Or at least one representative of the is formally involved in the governance of the firm. Listed also meet the definition of family enterprise if the persons possess 25% of the decision making rights by their share. Contributions of family firms. Family firms have contributed a lot. Because of uh, poor record keeping in this country, we could not even find a list of failed family businesses. We couldn't. We searched. But growing up, we always know that these are small but mighty businesses who contribute in a lot of ways to the GDP, even unrecorded, to employment, to revenues, to wealth creation in so many ways. In most countries around the world, FOBs contribute 60 to 90 percent in non-governmental GDP, 50 to 80 percent of all private sector jobs, 85% of all business startups are with family money. In the United States in particular, FOBs contribute more than 75% of net job growth and globally, generally, between 70 and 95% of all business entities, if weighted, are FOBs. As of 2016, FOB's contribution to national DGP, GDP of selected countries are, or we are, Mexico 90%, Brazil 86%, Dominican Republic 80%, Philippines 76%, Peru 75 and so on and so forth. Many other countries are below 60%, uh, but they have been improved. These are contained in the lecture booklet, specifically in the United Kingdom alone in 2016 by the UK Family Business Sector Records of 2017 to 2018, 4.8 million family-run businesses comprised 88% of all private sector firms. 3.9 million businesses are a single owner or multiple owner made up of 
84.4% of all family businesses. And then family businesses employed 12.2 million people are accounting for 47% of private sector employment and 35% of all employment in UK. Family businesses earned 1.4 trillion pounds in revenue in 2016 in UK, comprising 35% of total private sector turnover. And then family businesses generated a 519 million billion pounds gross value added contribution to UK GDP. And also family businesses contributed 149 billion pounds in taxes, both directly and indirectly through their employment. These records are not available. These records are hardly seen in this country because of our poor keeping records, which we know they are making they got their own contributions in a very humble way. Now we looked at world's largest family uh, businesses as we were looking at the contribution they have made over the years. And we found out that Cargill Food Ingredients, that is Cargill Company dealing with food, ingre in food ingredients, was established in 1865 and has lasted for 154 years. And of course, the founder died in uh, 1909. Okay, if we look at the tables very closely, the detail we're not going to take because of time, we will see their contributions, a market capitalization, and the annual revenue, and then the number of employees and then if we go back, the second oldest is Root Pharmaceuticals. Established in 1896, has lasted for 122 years. Of course, the name of the family is still there. And that is for the world's largest businesses, the rest are also listed. Then for 10 leading family businesses in Africa, we discovered that Nigeria, Dan Tata organization, by the way, Dan Gote is the nephew of Dan Tata. So we're not hearing about Dan Tata again. Dan Gote is aspiring to become, if he has not become, the largest in times of in terms of any parameter largest business in a Africa. so it's not in this list but the founder is here or the roots from where he grew up is here and that is the Dan Tata that was established in 1910 has lasted for 109 years and contributes Annual revenue, $300 million. Of course, the founder died in 1955. The second oldest is Madhvani Group, a Ugandan company established by an Indian-born person. The business started in 1912 and has lasted 400 and seven years. Of course, the net worth is hundred million dollars. The founder died in 1958 after Dan Tata. Okay, so let us go on. Before we get into these constraints, we will see that, of course, one of the business groups, the Dan Tata, of course, thank God, from Nigeria, and the second one from Uganda. So we are blessed with one. And uh, we can see, before going on, that none from this side. And yet, 
People from this side, the southeast, are priests for their prowess in business. Nothing lasts very long over here. Constraints of operating family funds. The problems can be classified as either internal or external. For the internal sources, initial lack of defined structure, no structure, nobody knows who is on top or who is below, they just go on. Lack of management proficiency. Who talks about management? Because management is something we practice every day without knowing. But management proficiency must be learned. And nobody thinks about that. Lack of professional staff, they are very expensive. What do they know? It was only recently that banks started training their staff once they hire, before they are hired and sent in and they start working. So family businesses also are in that practice if they hire, because most of the time it is Ukafo and sons, and Okeke and sons. Another problem is polygamous family issues, where there is more than one wife. A lot of interests are presented and must be defended, especially by the mothers. Family conflicts, when you, in, the, in the polygamous family, it is bigger because of the many cultural dynamics. And succession issues, who talks about that? I have once interviewed a businessman in Oka here in one of the researches, and he said, I am happy running my business. When I die, it's another thing. I don't care what the children will do. Is it not disheartening? And then wills. How many people have the time to write? Lack of defined retirement process. We will get to where we will begin to see how problematic it is when this, this has not been considered. The non-membership of professional bodies. Being members to professional bodies and going to their meetings exposes their family businesses to advantages and privileges that are open to them. And when they discuss their common problems, they are able to harness these advantages. A lot do not belong. Then cultural hindrances, which we are going to see where it is believed that only the males can inherit anything. Problems from the external sources. Many are indicators of ease of doing business. And ease of doing business is uh, calculated by the World Bank from a lot of aggregates and these specific indicators. So every year or every two years, they are weighted through aggregation and they begin to uh, position countries where they belong. These indicators include starting a business, dealing with uh, building permits, power supply, registration issues, getting credits, protecting minority investors, paying taxes, trading across borders, enforcing contracts, resolving insolvency, and the labor market regulations. The World Bank's Doing Business 2020 Index, Nigeria rose in that assessment 15 places upwards, that is from 146 to 131. When these calculations are done, countries are rated from one to about, I think, 156. And Nigeria, in the one they have done for 2020, um, took the position of 131st from 146. So, a lot of improvement. But these improvements are not felt by the businesses. Small-scale businesses in general, let me not go to the big ones, and family-owned businesses in particular, they are yet to be felt. The other constraints are poor infrastructural provisions, we feel every day, high operating costs, unstable political environment, and insecurity and fear, which has become 
the order of the day. Collapse of family businesses in Nigeria. It is said that family in most modern, this is not a, 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 a fact finding, this is a mere speculation. We are going to see the general um, percentages. But if we begin to think of uh, family businesses that have died, you know, under our watch, we will see that Nigeria has not done well. And generally, most family-owned business die in their first generation. Sometimes the founder is still alive. At other times, immediately he leaves. A lot of issues will now rise that will generate a lot of confusion and conflicts. And in the process, a lot of other things happen. Much thought is not given to succession issues until the demise of the founder. Confusion, temporary closure of business until the burial rights are fully performed. And it is after the burial rights, if the family is still one and together, that they will now begin to think of what do we do? Where do we go from here? But in most cases, during the confusion that ensues, at the death of the founder, some people are killed, some people are maimed, and that is without mentioning names, we can think loud and point at businesses where these have uh, happened. If we trace the history of businesses, family businesses in this country, we would think of a Kennedy Lichuku, the ones I know, Uma Nomotos, Gina Soft Drinks, a Kennedy Lichuku, and Chidi Ebele. Of course, you can count and count, and a lot of others. Most of them are either dead, or throttling, or in comatose, or still fighting in the families up till today. Now, before the mention of these businesses, a gentleman in the class of his own, Sir Louis, he's called Sir Louis, not Louis, Louis, or the Mabel, or Jupu, who is considered in a, a businessman in a class of his own, noted as the first Nigeria's recorded millionaire, founding president of Nigeria Stock Exchange, and president of African Continental Bank, Recorded as either chairman or on the board of Nigeria's most reputable and profitable companies at the time. In fact, in 1952, he loaned his Rolls Royce to the then federal government so that the Queen Elizabeth II, who visited Nigeria, could be chauffeur driven because at the time Nigeria could not afford to buy a Rolls Royce. And it was then the most prestigious guy. <laughs> Let's Mushud Abiola. He has a business empire, which covered banking, telecommunication, education, aviation, oil and gas, a chain of newspapers, extensive real estate, and many more. These are no more. And it is so sad. A lot of companies that have would have a reason to blue chip companies, all dead. There is also the most recent, which is still trending, and that is the collapse of Diamond Bank, which has been acquired by Access Bank. The story is still very fresh and in the public domain, and these are very worrisome. Now, the short life of FOBs is not peculiar to Nigeria. Because it has been discovered that only 30%, that is about one third of FOBs, survive into the second generation. Only 12 to 13% into the third generation. Only 3 to 4% make it into the fourth generation. And therefore, if we cast our minds back to the list, child leading businesses, 
in the world and ten leading businesses in Africa. We will see that these are the resilient and dogged family businesses, the exceptions that have stood the test of time. Questions for better insight into reasons for FOB's failure. Did these businesses have vision? What is vision? Vision in a layman's time, time is thinking ahead, thinking of the future. The vision becomes a guide for any business. And a visionless business, in quotes, is a directionless business. Because, because it thinks about the future, time element is always there. Where am I going to be? Everybody has to be visionary in order to forge ahead. Because when we are visionary, we um, set goals for ourselves. And that is why some students will say, I'll graduate in so-so and so year. I'll be here in so-so and so year. I'll make these grades in so-so and so year. These are the things you have not done. But when you set, when you are a visionary person, you are able to set goals and objectives that will now drive the achievement of your visions. For organizations, it also drives the achievements of their missions. We have very clear objectives set at the onset. Okay, we have very clear objectives set at the onset. Of course, they are related, the first and second. But the, the second is a smaller picture that drives the first. Objectives are measurable. If I'm a student and in my first year I tell myself I'm not going to make a, a C, at the end of the first year I, will, I should be able to look at my results and see have I met that objective. And it's the same thing with businesses. Were they driven by certain objectives that are set? and can be evaluated periodically. Where are we? What are we doing? How have we done? We are professionals or other trained staff involved in the management of the businesses. Professionals are very expensive. But somehow they are trained to say things, to do things, to achieve results. They can also be very expensive, as I said. Were there successors taught or mentored on the threads of the businesses? Of course. I told you of an interview with a businessman here in Oka, and he said, I don't care what they do when I'm dead. I am satisfied with operating this business and running it while I'm alive. And uh, I felt shocked because that means nobody is being mentored, nobody is taught. Do the businesses have shareholders? Shareholders spend their money, they invest their money because they expect returns on their investments. And they are there to take decisions that will affect the businesses. So they come in to represent their own personal interests as well as the interests of the organization, which benefit them at the end of the day. Most are not. Because as the DVC said, Okorie and Sons, Okeke and Sons. How involved were the children of the founder in the day-to-day -day running of the business? Well, today, I met a businessman at Onisha when I went there for a research in writing one of our papers. During one of the Anambra State uh, trade fair, and he said, My children will not suffer as I'm doing. It is an unbearable environment for business. So, 
How do you think such a person can train the children or mentor them? Your guess can be as good as mine that the children may not even be in this country. We are core values. What core values drove the operations? Values, of course, we know. Our positive cultural inclinations that have been learned over time and define the operations of businesses, but they must have been rooted in the family. They must have been rooted in the family. If not, they come to the businesses as codes, codes of conduct. What strategies were applied in conflict management? Of course, this is one of the biggest problems, conflict management. No strategies are set, and therefore sometimes it's, it's, it's a, how do I put it? A bag of confusion that even the person who is at the helm of our affair, either as founder or so-called successor, may want to run away. So we are there laid down structure for FOBs. Who is the next person? Who do you report to? Who are you responsible to? Who is accountable to you? These are defined under structure. Succession and sustainability of family firms. Of course, succession means to succeed one, the act of inheriting, transfer of power and authority from one group to another who will manage the family business, the ability of the founder to peacefully and successfully transfer the operations of the business to the next generation who are mostly family members. It can also take place um, in the presence of the founder as a result of old, old age, sickness, or even somebody who has thought seriously about it to put things right before he leaves out of his own volition. It is the process of replacing one leader with another. It's a political uh, process associated with transfer of power, followed by major changes in the organization and its uh, strategies. It takes place in any, every business organization, but in family businesses, it is more intricate because of the cultural dynamics of who the successor should be. Factors that constrain FOB owners from succession. To the owner, according to Landsberg, 1988, fear of death, reluctance to let go of control and power, loss of identity, bias against planning, inability to choose among children, whose fault? Nobody. Can't even tell you that this person will do it or the other person will do it. Fear of retirement. That is over position of power and je jealousy and rivalry. To the family, spouse resistance, family taboos, fear of parental mortality, conflicts, and incompetency of parental future generations. To the employees, and finally, to the general environment. These are the four categories. Now, there has always been this wrong assumption about FOB succession, that the children are interested in managing FOBs. They are interested. Who told you? The present generation are the generation of no skin pain. Two years ago, I discussed with the final year students. And I was, we were discussing the general issues of bribery and corruption and bad governance. And I said, you are the hope of tomorrow. Do you know what they told me? Don't rely on us. Because we will steal more money than they are stealing today. And that is the orientation. So children may fail you. 
that children will easily accept to become successors. Mm -mm. They will not. Especially when they are not mentored in the day-to-day -day running of the business. When they have not been exposed to the constraints of the business. They will not accept. And when they do, it may not last. That it is just a transfer of leadership. No! A lot of intricacies are involved in becoming a successor. And people who have, been, who have not been opened and nurtured step by step in the involvement of being the leader of so many people in the family, their wives and their children may not be able. So it's not just transfer of leadership. They're preparing children outside the country for a uh, family business succession does not matter. It matters a lot. These children are pampered so much. They have not been beaten by the sun enough. They have not been exposed to the things, you know, the family business stands for. Family business succession for the development, replacement, and uh, other things. It's not just it's saying that it is not just transfer of uh, ownership. And, but one thing to note is that once succession has not been well planned and a capable and fails to emerge, sustainability remains a mirage. Rethinking succession in family firms by way of recommendations. Family businesses should run with vision to enhance evaluation of achieved goals from set objectives. There must be visions to drive what happens in the business. They should hire more hands, capable hands, from the early stage, especially when the person at the helm of our affairs has not been exposed to proficiency. Family businesses must be ready to change. We live in a changing environment, and this change has become, it is permanent. It has not become, it has always been permanent. In fact, the only permanent phenomenon that we know Business process re-engineering should be seen as key in the sustainability of EVOs, EVOBs. Business process re-engineering is searching, looking at everything the business stands for and discarding the ones that are not helpful anymore. Plugging the uh, leaking areas and sustaining. An example is what, is what has happened in the banks today through business process re-engineering before they will send your statements quarterly to you. And after a while, they discovered that these statements were not claimed. Some were not sent. And they started creating places, spaces for storing them. And rooms were usually filled up with statements. And they did a rethinking of what this, their businesses stood for. And they said no more. Today, you no more get your statements that you pay when you make a request. So they did not only discard giving statements to their customers, they made it an internal source of a revenue. FOB should flow some percentage of the firm's, you know, firm's share for subscription to allow shareholders. Timely succession in FOB should not be neglected. Train the child away, he should grow. And when he grows up, he will not depart from it. Should be part of it. Any child can become a successor. Women, I'm sorry, I, I am under all men, especially my dear husband. But women can also perform. We have a lot of women, and I can cite Enzo Pharmaceutical. She's getting old, but she was able to do it. Women should not always be looked down on in these things. Polygamy must be considered. If one is a, poly, a, poly, a polygamist, how have you planned your family? If you fail to do that, they will kill each other when you are no more. Or even in your presence, they will be fighting. And it becomes a source of disgrace. So men should think twice before going for second wives. If you are in that category. <laughs> One is enough trouble. One is already a mouthful. So why two more? Conflict as a natural phenomenon should not be left out. There must be a way of handling conflicts because it creates a lot of animosities 
and without handling them very well, it becomes a problem that will be tearing down not only the business, but the persons in the business. Business values are very important for the sustenance of family businesses. If you read through so many businesses that have succeeded today, you will see and agree with me that business values are very, very important. But some families may not have values. So what it means is that you have to um, depend on codes of ethics as rules that will guide your business. It is always better to have family values so that transferring them into the business is not a big problem. Conclusion. Great minds have conceived and created many products and services in various family businesses worldwide. And these have contributed immensely in different measures to building up many economies in unimaginable ways. However, these advantages have been found to be applicable mostly in developed economies and in very few developing ones. In most developing nations, the advantage of founding family businesses are mostly enjoyed only while the founder still lives. And I want to tell you some founders are not happy anymore. That is right in their face. The businesses have not only crumbled, but the family ties have crumbled. I will not mention anyone. This has been evident and proven from the poor sustainability of family funds. The Nigerian economy in particular has suffered lots of setback, arising from very poor or lack of sustainability of family businesses, especially in the southeastern states, known for their entrepreneurial prowess. Where are the businesses? They are all dead. There is therefore an urgent need for a paradigm shift in the sustainability of family firms, and this will come from re-engineering and reinventing the whole essence of continuity of family firms while the owner the founders are still alive. The joy of successfully founding a firm ought to be witnessed during the lifetime of the founder and after through its sustainability. The multifarious issues raised in this inaugural lecture, which have been found to be devil, the sustainability of family friends, must therefore be addressed very seriously and urgently too. If the dividends accruable from such special group of funds will be enjoyed in the Nigerian society, especially those from the southeastern states. The many questions and the proposed answers are expected to provide food for thought for owner managers and will be founders for family firms sustainability to be ensured. Acknowledgement. I graciously thank the Almighty God again who has met this inaugural lecture possible. He picked me from the lowest heads and brought me to the highest heights of my career. The story is too long and can never be completely told anywhere. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. I am grateful to the Vice Chancellor for upholding, improving, and sustaining the inaugural lecture structure to full sponsorship. Thank you for the opportunity, my Vice Chancellor, to deliver mine with all the benefits attached. I also wish to appreciate Professor Richard Uwakwe, the son of Uwakwe, that is the present chairman of the inaugural lecture committee, and his team for the role they play towards ensuring the actualization of this lecture. I must not fail to appreciate Professor Amechi Oyeka, for her encouragement, she called me one day in 2016 and said, Kate, if you don't get it, at the end of one of these inaugural lectures, you know, you may never think 
um, about it, but such nudging helped a lot. Thank you, ma'am. To my teachers from the primary to the university, I remain faithful, forever grateful for your sacrifices and dedication that impacted on my life positively. Professor Chinelo Nzalibe, who supervised my master's uh, um, project or thesis. She's now a lecturer at the University of Abuja. Professor Sisi Nwachiku and um, Professor Dan Baridan, both of Uniport, who supervised my master PhD thesis in Uniport. Thank you very much. I wish to acknowledge Professor Ben Osioma, who I regard as my mentor in leadership. The dean I served under as a sub-dean, and under whose tutelage I learned so much as a protege. He did not doubt my integrity when he came to managing millions of Naira. He was not around during that accreditation exercise, and I, appeal, I appealed that no other person should be sent to act as the dean. He simply told the, vice, the then vice chancellor, Professor Ilochi Buka, to release any amount to me. Do not entertain fear. She will judiciously spend the money and I account to the last school. Thank you for reposing such trust and confidence in me. I appreciate the staff of Abia State University of Kiwi. And they, just, they called and said they will not be able to come today. They assured me. And the UNN also, they said they will come, and this morning they cancelled. I wish to acknowledge the presence of the members of the Council of Chuku and Mecca of Chuku University. Here seated is the Chairman of Council, Architect Chen. Thank you. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Greg Wakubi. No, thank you. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Ellis Itemobi is here. Thank you very much. And Dr. Ngozi Ezebe, who is the registrar, they are all here. I want to thank you. I appreciate all the staff of the Faculty of Management Sciences, especially the Dean, who promised me, she said, I will do everything to try to come back. But if I fail to come back, then you know it's, it was made impossible beyond human redemption. She called me this morning and said, how are you preparing? I said, fine. She said, I am back. I thought she said she was coming back. I said, Johnny Messi. She said, I'm in Oka. Thank you. I had you taking late with all the problems. Thank you very much. The members of this faculty, the planning committee in particular, rallied drums to ensure the success of this Exercise. I also want to thank Professor Anna Ayon University in a special way, a distinguished research scholar and currently the president of the Academy of Management, Nigeria. He has continued to make <laughs> conscious efforts at inculcating research culture in um, academic staff in the Faculty of Management Sciences. I also have the privilege of working with him in some of the papers. Thank you very much, Popo. Thank you. I am greatly indebted to the past and current MSC and PhD students who have worked as seriously with me in various researches whose outcomes have become part of this inaugural <coughs> lecture. Notable among them is Dr. Ifan Yukul. He came yesterday to my house and said, uh, two days ago, I must travel to Abuja. There's a training. I will be sponsored abroad, and he said I have to be there. So he's not here. Others are Reverend Dr. Liu almost Are you here? Oh, he's there. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Matthias Hello, aka. Where are you? Oh, thank you very much. Dr. John Lofo. He told me he will be here. And uh, Dr. Joseph Igomu is over there. Thank you for coming. Okay, Mo, are you here? Soon to become. Oh, she's there. Thank you very much for coming. All the undergraduate students of the faculty, especially those in the Department of Business Administration, I remain forever grateful. Great university students. Yes. But they are not here. But I thank them because they are the reason the faculty students I mean. That is, I don't know how many of you are from 
Faculty of Management Sciences. Oh, the, oh, thank you very much. I said, you are the reason I came to you with it. And without your first becoming students, who would have given me the opportunity of being, who would I have come here to do? So I will not have had the opportunity of coming here as a lecturer without your presence. Thank you very much. I wish to appreciate the presence of the Chaplaincy Council of um, St. Joseph the Walker, led by Father Remigius as Oh, he's there. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. The members of the Catholic Women Organization of the Chaplaincy are also here. Wait, wait, let me see you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. The choir and the Bazaar Planning Committee are also here, I've seen um, Oji and the others. God bless you all for honoring my invitation. The members of the Knight of St. Molumba, they are the ones in green scarf with uh, one of the men. Where are the men? Okay, they are in suits. Thank you very much. They are in suits. So my national mufti, they are in suits. Thank you all for coming. I have been a teacher all my life. Started with the primary school immediately after my school search. You heard my story. And immediately after obtaining the West African School Certificate, I also taught in the primary school and secondary school. Why at Ibibike? Okay, I came very close to some of my students. One of them is Dustin Baker. Unfortunately, he's not here. Um, he's presently among my sons because we started relating on that basis right from Are you here, Father Kenneth? not here. It's, it's a pity. He said he will be here. The last but not the least of my students at Ibubike is uh, Professor Colin Sukukafo, who read my citation. Professor in the area of political science. I thank you. Where is he? Oh, thank you very much. I've already said it was an honor, and it's still an honor, because I know the caliber of people you read their citations. Thank you. I wish to acknowledge the presence of POSA, Poster, where are they? Please wave your hand. Let's go. Woo! One in brotherhood. One in brotherhood. They are here. Thank you very much. For my median family, my big uncle, Jesufat and Isova, just wave your hands. He's there. My great uncle. Some of my brothers are here. Seven in number. Some of them, Chike Aguche is here. You wave your hands, Chike. Um, Patricia Moka, Moka Yo Yo Yo. Hallelujah. And Joe Boy, where are you? Reverend, he's not here. I wonder what. Thank you very much for coming, Dr. N J C Okonkwo. I saw him. He hugged me and they wished me well. Thank you. Oh, he's over there. Thank you very much. And then. Miss Ifred is the one lady, I'm coming there. The wife is there. Is also here. Okay. Etuches Yoko. Etuches Yoko. Oh, then, Mel, then, Mel, he's over there. He's over there. Thank you very much. I also want to thank Honorable Chukodi. Is it that him? Oh, he's there, please. Oh, the interim local government chairman, and he has served in the House of Assembly. Thank you very much for coming. Our children are also here. Through the enabling grace of God, now so is standing in the stead of the Father, sitting with me. Nene, where are you? Are you here? Oh. <laughs> okay. Where is Ezine? Is she here? They are both lecturers. In fact, it's a family of lecturers, all of them. The first unit, the second uh, unit, the third school unit. 
thank you for coming. Before thanking my in-laws, I want to thank uh, the father of our faculty, Professor Peter Ujiofo. The faculty is named after him because of all the efforts. He has been a vice chancellor in this university, and he fought very doggedly to bring down both the university and the faculty to Oka. Thank you, Ohamadike, for calling for coming. And then for the other senior professors, I can see Professor Moore, Professor Ibenta, and uh, the rest of them. I wouldn't be able to see all of you here. Professor Wang, United Nations. Yeah. So the um, district chairman, who is in charge of 11 instances, is here. Please go behind. And then, before her, the past board director, who has served in the board that is that is in charge of the global uh, organization, Professor Becky, who was the American, one of us. She is here. There are others who are here, Nonye, Antonia, Nonko. Okay. I acknowledge the presence of my daughters in law. They said they must come. Honestly, they are not here. But one of them just gave birth to a new baby. She was very conscious, she was very anxious to come, and I said, no, not up to one month. I think, was it, is it up to one month? I said, no, not up to one month. Stay with the baby and continue to rest. I want to thank all of them. I have chosen to appreciate my husband, Professor Nonsu Nabifela. Of course, we know he died. He's saying, my in-laws. I didn't see his any he's saying. He's not here. But Lolo, Akeze is here. On the best, where is she? Okay, she's there. Mm -hmm. My daughter is being married there. Where is Owele? Okogo, where are you? He's there. Where is Ebuka? And siblings, please, away. Where? Okay, okay. My daughter married to um, Wawa, so I am now half Wawa and half Anambra. But they are doing her very well. I don't want to tell you everything. Let me have some secrets. None, oh, none for God. I can see uh, two of them. Thank you very much. Um, the staff of FMS, I want to thank you again because of rally, rallying around me to make sure that things happen. Some are waiting somewhere for the entertainment, making sure that everything goes on fire. And I started appreciating my husband, the love of my life. He was my friend. He was my mentor. He was my motivator. He was my confidant. He was my teacher. He was everything to me except my creator and maker. Because having married immediately after my um, secondary school education, my husband took over. I've lost him and life will not be the same. I've always believed that part of me left within because he died right in my arms. Tomorrow would have marked his 22nd birthday. Oh, sorry, 70th birthday. His 70th birthday and his formal exit from this university. May he so rest in peace. Amen. I end this inaugural lecture with a feeling of nostalgia. Wishing that my mother, in particular, would have still been around to witness the results of her hard work. My father also, who was a very close friend of mine, because I was sleeping with him. My mother wasn't sleeping with him. The love was so strong that I would not leave that bed, and you know the rest. He was... He was killed, as I said, during the war. He's not here. My mother-in-law, 
who was, you know, she loved me so much that, in fact, all, all the love of my life, they are all good. She died of esophageal cancer. She was also a very special friend. I will, however, continue to praise my God and the creator of all things who picked me from the mud. I said from the mud. And not only washed me, but raised me up to the present heights. He made today possible. To him also be all glory. To him be all glory, all honor, power, dominion. All praises and all times living forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. And I have devoted this song to sing to my Lord. When I am down and oh my soul so weary. Presence of Professor Greg Makobi, 
the Vice Chancellor of Chukwuma Community University. Uh, the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor, yeah. And uh, also Dr. Ndozi is in the, the Registrar of Chukwuma Community University. A round of applause. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. And of course, uh, I was uh, pointed out the direction of Professor Solomon Ekwens, uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Administration, Chukwuma Community University. Please round of applause for his presence here. And of course, um, we're all here when uh, the OB of furniture, Abogi, Alfred Nemeta Chebe, Chico, C.O.M. A round of applause, Abogi. In a man and man, Darwin. Of course. Ezuzu, what are you doing? Ezuzu, because if only I have not... Darwin. Um, and while things were going on also, Chief Fidelson Nelly also came in, Ajie Anam. Please round of applause for Ajie Anam. And um, okay, if you are there, okay. uh, the giant bull cannot hide in any matter of brush. Chief Chika Opala. Chika Opala. So would you call it Bumu? And he has fought at the original from one powerless. Gallo, Gallo, eh? You're not going to hold. Even if you're going to hold, you're not going to hold. You're not going to hold. Eh? No, no. Thank you very seriously. Professors. Chief is well powerless. Chief the Honorable Zebrudaya or Kuri Gumu. I am not professor. Therefore, but very soon they will professor. We mean our friend actually, your foundation. All the ways that are here, I can say why you were here, of the Oka. Community who are here. So many in the world of them. <laughs> so many friends and well wishers of our dear lecturer today. I am saying, Chile Kiko, God bless all of you. And then, uh, whatever you are required in your life, fulfillment of life, but he also addition. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I begin to talk more of your time now, you give me a very big joke, a long joke, but a very short joke, you will you will say, oh, why didn't you start it before she came? So therefore, I am reserving it on the 28th of November, when I'm going to have a command performance at the Theatre Arts Auditorium, here in the Nam Desi Kiwen University. Those who come in time will have cheer. Those who are not have will stood up. Thank you. Um, uh, I grew up watching him. Of course, he's still here. Chineke de Dope again, Donava Jesus. Um, Incidentally, in one of my academic pursuits, he is part of the people I studied in a topic called Minority Discusses, which by God's grace will be published by Rutledge very soon. I will publish it again. Um, I will now call on the Vice Chancellor, with your express permission, for the declaration of the 52nd inaugural lecture in the person of Professor Ezeman Nadifebiko. My committee, Kedono, they will defer the Jubilee Declaration. This is the time cameramen will actually do their job, but not by obfuscating the vision of people you are standing before. The son of a work with. I'm looking at Paul. I'm actually here laughing. Prof, I will not be a lecturer. Vice 